Axioms are set theory are the foundational logical statements on which all of mathematics stands. These axioms were devised in order to unite all of the branches of mathematics. And people like George Cantor did it successfully because now we can regard any mathematical object as a set. That's right, any. A function, for example, can be viewed as a set of tuples or other sets where the first elements are taken from the domain and the second are functional values. Numbers are also sets. The naturals begin with the empty set, one is the set containing the empty set, and each next set contains all the previous ones. Likewise, the rationals and irrationals have their set theoretic interpretation. The particular set of axioms that we accept nowadays bears the name of Zermelo Frankel. Most of them sound reasonable and intuitive. Take extensionality. If two sets A and B have the same elements, then they are equal. Or the axiom which declares the existence of an empty set. There exists a set denoted by phi and called the empty set which has no elements. But there is one special axiom that has caused a lot of controversy. The axiom of choice. This is what it states. Alright, in human language it states that for any collection of non-empty sets, there is a way to choose exactly one element from each set, i.e. there is a choice function. It does not even sound like something we must assume. If you have the sets, simply take any elements you want. So why even declare it as an axiom? Well, if you speak the strict language of first order logic, it turns out that the axiom of choice is independent of all other axioms. It means that if you use all the axioms from Zermelo Frankel, you can neither prove the axiom of choice is true, nor that it is false. So, the existence of a choice function is not guaranteed by the other axioms. Right. But why is this axiom even important? Well, consider this statement. Every vector space has a basis. This sounds remarkably obvious, something you should be able to prove from first principles. Actually, this is one of the most famous equivalents of the Zorn's lemma, which is equivalent to the axiom of choice. So, if you don't have the axiom, you don't have this remarkably useful fact under the belt and linear algebra becomes much more difficult. Another immeasurably useful result in algebra that every field has an algebraic closure also depends on the axiom of choice. To be precise, it is equivalent to a slightly weaker assumption called compactness theorem. So, this axiom is of indisputable importance. But do you remember the infamous Banach-Tarski paradox? A spherical ball can be partitioned into a finite number of pieces that can be reassembled to form two balls, each identical to the initial one. The proof of this paradox, surprisingly, depends on the axiom of choice. Another counterintuitive fact arising from the axiom of choice is called the well-ordering theorem. It states that any set can be well-ordered. And for the reals, it means that there is a way to define what less than and greater than mean so that any open set from A to B has the smallest element. And this contradicts our perception of the reals, because we know that there is no smallest element in here. To sum it all up, we can bring up the quote from Jerry Bona. The axiom of choice is obviously true. The well-ordering principle is obviously false. And who can tell about Zorn's lemma? So, which side are you on?